All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Kathy Thompson, who loves to create. Kathy, how you doing? I'm just fine, Tim. Awesome. Right. Love to hear it, love to hear it. And we'd like to jump right in. So if we could start with hearing a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. All right, well... <clears throat> I could probably best describe me as a spoiled rotten because when I was growing up, my father made a pretty good uh, income. So we got everything we ever asked for. And um, I was always in my, everybody's shadow, my sister's shadow, my mother's shadow, my father's shadow. So I really didn't know who I was when I was growing up. I just wasn't there. there. And um, when we're turning around, I'm trying to find myself. I didn't know what to do until I found the Air Force. I joined the Air Force. And believe me, that turned my whole life around because I was a very uh, shy, backward, naive person. And I volunteered to be a training instructor at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio for five years. Gotcha. And I loved it. I, I turned around. I like the idea of being on the podium and being able to reach people. And believe me, recruits are a hard audience. But I had fun with it because um, I would pretend to be, you know, maybe perhaps drunk or something like that. And I would come into the classroom, uh, you know, with my uh, uniform off and um, pretend I'm a pilot and I'm looking for my plane. And it was hilarious. And it was a whole lot of fun. Well, all my teachings were in the classroom. So I could say that my classroom was my battlefield and my weapon was a piece of chalk. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, other uh, classes that I taught all the way from um, military law to history and um, <clears throat> drug and alcohol abuse. Like I said, I had fun with that. There was also venereal diseases back then and first aid. And I taught for about, mm, about five years because there was about 30 students in my class every time. So I taught five hours a day, five days a week for five years. And I became the best, I became a master training instructor. And then I kind of burnt out and uh, I had to get out. But the Air Force didn't want to let me go because I didn't have enough female instructors. But I took my discharge anyway. And after that, I didn't want to lose the skills that I had learned in the classroom. So I joined Toastmasters for about 20 years. And then after that, I went and got my uh, college degree and I got my BS and BS. <laughs> but uh, like I said, but I was still again trying to find myself. And early in my life, because of being spoiled, I was always me, me, me. What's in it for me? And that I realized it didn't work. All I really wanted to do was to create, like I told you. But then uh, something else was in the way. I had to be, bring in an income, so I had to get jobs. And I was trained, you know, to do office work, but I was never satisfied. I was born to be creative. And that's pretty much uh, brings it up to date. Gotcha. I love that. And I love how you um, knew that while you were working in one job, you knew what you were meant to do. And I also loved how you tried to hold on to those skills that you learned in the classroom by joining Toastmasters. Tell us a little bit about what you create now in your 25 self-published books. Oh, well... <laughs> Um, I like to write, like I said, and I also like to write stories. Over my lifetime, I've written over 100 stories. But I also like to design. And that means uh, to create floor plans, actually. I like to draw. I was born with a pencil in my hand. And that's how uh, pretty sums it up. And now I've also been a tomboy, so I, I like sports. I like to get out. I love swimming. And I love uh, singing and dancing. There's a lot of things that I, I really enjoy doing. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. 
tell us about your motivation for writing. Like what gets you up and keeps you going with writing so many books? Uh, probably the movies. I am addicted to movies. <laughs> I still am. And I'm a Trekkie, yes I am. And a lot of my stories that I've written are, um, are <clears throat> the takeoffs from some of the movies that I've seen. Ah, gotcha. Is that how most of your books are written or are there other ways that you kind of get your inspiration too? Uh, there are other ways uh, that I have gotten just out of the blue, a lot of times from my dreams, but mainly from the, from the, the movies. Because I went, went to school and learned how to make movies. And I thought that was outstanding. That was part of it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so I know you said early earlier in your life, a lot of the things that you were doing were me, 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 because you grew up so spoiled. How is your creating um, impacting other people and helping other people? Um, uh, all my writing is helping other people. Uh, a lot of my friends uh, have uh, talked about it and, you know, wanted to know what I've been writing about. And possibly also I had some people interested in uh, wanting to uh, <clears throat> publish one of my books, but that one's sour. <laughs> so it's, uh, it works always. Everything comes out for the better for me, because I do believe. I believe in me and I believe in uh, the Lord God and all my family and friends. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It sounds like you writing your books um, kind of forges your connection with your friends, but also motivates them a little bit to do the stuff that they want to do, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that. Well, tell us about your dreams and goals for your books and your writing and just vision for your life in general. Well, when I was growing up, like I said, I was always me, me, me. But uh, just recently in my life, I realized that this is wrong. Uh, it's going to turn and bite, but bit me in the ass, mm -hmm. you know, because of um, depression, you know, uh, bankruptcy, you know, all that that was got really got me down. But now I keep myself up because I do a lot of uh, reading and watching uh, motivational books and dreams. I love that. I love that. So is it just like, instead of getting caught up in you, 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 it's getting more caught up in helping others, helping others in the intangibles of life. Correct. And it's so feeling good. It really feels good. I'm doing some coaching, you know, helping some people, uh, you know, to turn, uh, give back. Matter of fact, I just uh, started a stress class here where I live. Oh, tell us about the stress class. Uh, it's about different uh, types and different ways that you can fight stress and win. Because all the way from deep breathing to meditating and different little uh, examples, uh, like hugging actually also helps. There's a whole lot of stuff that uh, I have uh, as a background to help teach the classes for myself or others. Gotcha. gotcha. Can you take a little bit of a deep dive into some of the techniques that you um, use to help people combat stress? Oh, like deep dive? What do you mean by deep dive? Yeah, just tell us a little bit more in depth about what the breathing techniques look like, what the meditation looks like. Okay. Uh, well, my favorite one is deep breathing. And this one is uh, helps. This is a really good technique, uh, Tim, that you can use. Anybody can use any time because it's almost like invisible. And what do I do is I tell them to make a, take a nice deep breath and then let it ex exhale. Just inhale really slowly and deep and exhale. And I do that for a few minutes. And then I add to this. When you are inhaling, 
you are uh, accepting the love that comes out from the universe, from our world, from all around you. Bring that uh, in. Bring that inhale to uh, give, uh, receiving love. And then when you exhale, you're giving that love. And spread it out. Spread it out to all your family and friends. Spread it out to the universe. And this really helped, you know, and envision that, that your love is going out into the world. Just envision all the love and all the happiness that's going on. So like I said, inhale, receive that love, and exhale, give that love. And that's one of my number one favorites. I love that. Where did you first put that up? Uh, I don't recall. <laughs> Gotcha. Hey, that's fine too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. If there were one or two people you could meet right now that would really help you, you know, take the next step in helping more people with the intangibles in life or helping more people combat stress, who would you need to meet and how would they do it? It can be a specific person or a type of person. Uh, well, I do have a good friend who lives uh, uh, out west in Oregon that uh, we have been friends with each other and we're both into this uh, meditation, you know, and uh, improvement, self-improvement with her. Um, but uh, there's somebody else I've got to uh, tell you about and everybody knows her is Shirley MacLaine, believe it or not. Now, when she got into the metaphysics, um, I was following her career anyway, but when she got into that, so did I. And I just, you know, <clears throat> uh, followed her career and I did meet her one time at a convention that she was doing. And that was really cool because what she was doing with her books as well, not just well her movies is what I followed as well. And I was able to get out of my body uh, after seeing her movies so of her uh, going out of her body. I thought was outstanding. And I'm sure that we, if we got together, we could uh, do a lot. Yeah, for sure. I actually have no idea who Shirley MacLaine is. <laughs> yeah. Let me look her up real quick. I, yeah, I figured she was. She okay. started, I believe, the uh, you know the uh, metaphysics uh, whole uh, whole thing here in America. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. Uh, An Academy Award winner. Yep. It's, uh, it's ringing a bell now. I knew she was a pretty famous actress. I just didn't, I couldn't see her face, but now I can see. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I have written to her at all. Has she ever written back? Uh, yes, she did, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's awesome. You're so And we were, we were talking about the, um, the different uh, central points of the body, the chakras. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. And so... You really want to deep dive into metaphysical stuff with Shirley? Oh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so when did you really make the shift in your life to focus on that a bit more? And is that kind of in line with the meditation? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. When I got into that, um, I just started doing it, you know, the deep breathing and uh, the exercises, the yoga and all that. I love it. I love it. Well, awesome. What are the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to really help you accomplish your dream? Like maybe it's spreading your books. Maybe it's just contacting you and having a conversation. What would it be? I would say uh, contacting me. And I do have my own website. And uh, just um, reaching out, contacting me, and I'll try to reach out and talk to everybody, you know, using the various uh, methods of these days is uh, awesome and endless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, now we're going to jump into our thriving three. So what is your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Um, probably the uh, book that I have here um, that really helped me. It's almost two inches thick because, and the total of, title of it is How to Achieve Total Success by Russ von Holshire. 
And it's an oldie but goodie, but it's got everything in it. It's not anything you'd want to talk about, like uh, uh, the first chapter, some of the chapters are desire, faith, goals, uh, growing with goals, wealth is a state of mind, and um, a whole bunch of them. Love is the only power. Happiness can be yours. And then it's got like a glossary and a whole bunch of good, great information that I've been following uh, for half my life. Gotcha. So is this the first time you've read this book or have you been reading it over and over kind of? Over and over because of all the uh, you know, folded little corners, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. What's one way you like to take care of yourself? To take care of myself? Yep, like um, exercise, meditation. I think you said deep breathing is probably your favorite way. Yes, yes, that would be my favorite, to take care of myself. And also, I've also been a health nut for a very long time. I, I have been eating healthy uh, probably most of my life. Got and you. exercising, so yes. And I don't wear a mask if I can't help it. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Well, what is one action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already taking it to either A, continue to have conversation with Shirley McLean or B, contact more people about your stress class and, you know, just coaching them with the intangibles in life? Yes, it would be that last one, uh, Tim. Uh, the class that I started recently. Uh, and then I spread it out. Um, like I do have my own YouTube channel where that is going out and a lot of the exercises and the one I just t told you about is on my YouTube channel. I love that. Well, is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Uh, uh, because um, when I was talking about... Uh, because of my problems, I've turned around and listened listen to those. And what has it taught me is that you have to go after your dreams. Because if you don't, you're going to be miserable. You need to do what comes naturally and follow those dreams. I love because that. If yeah. you had to talk to the person who's 20 years old right now, 18 years old, 22 years old, and they don't know what their dreams and goals are because they've never thought about it, kind of like you were, you know, coming out of the shadow of your parents and your siblings. What would you say to them to really help them figure out who they are? Listen to your heart. Uh, not your head. Mm -mm. But listen to your heart. That's what I would say. In other words, your intuition. Gotcha. Listen to your heart. Listen to your intuition. And would you argue that most people kind of have that voice, even though they may silent it, silence it, they know it's there and they kind of know what it's saying? Yes, they're silencing it and they need to wake up. Because there's a lot going on around us <laughs> that we don't understand. Yeah, absolutely. How do you wake up? Because, you know, if you've been silencing it for 22 years and you're 22 years old, you have no idea how to listen to your heart. Um, I would say, you know, talk to other people, talk to your, your, your uh, grandparents or something, because they, uh, we have the wisdom here. They have the knowledge and they can go get it and they can make this world work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you guys go. Kathy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you, Tim. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, of course. It was fun. And if you guys were listening to this and you vibed with Kathy and you want to either read her books or support her mission of, you know, getting the stress class out there or helping her with the metaphysical things and the intangibles in life, make sure to contact Kathy. And what's the best way to reach you? You said you had a website? Yes. Uh -huh. It's a uh, yes, you can blog dot com. Awesome. Well, there you go. Make sure to reach out to Kathy at yesyoucanblog.com. That will be in the show notes as well as her YouTube channel. 
as we always ask, if you guys are listening to this podcast and you can think of one, two, or three people you know need to hear this message, send the episode out to them. Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes. Thank you guys for listening. Kathy, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, of course. And we're out.